Hello class, uh, today we're going to learn how to integrate um, when the power rule doesn't work. So if you recall, in the power rule, if we had a function that we want to integrate, remember we added one and divided by that number? So if I said, hey you, what's the antiderivative of x squared? What you would do is you'd add one, which made it x to the third, and then you divide it by that number, which made it one third x to the third. And to check your work, remember you could take the derivative, 3 times 1 third is 1, and this becomes x squared. So the answer checks out. <clears throat> the problem is, is that what if you had a problem, I'm oh, sorry, what if you had an instance where I said take the derivative of x to negative 1? Well, with the power rule, normally you'd raise it to x to the 0, and then divide by 0. But how do you divide by 0? You can't. This topic is telling you that anytime you want to integrate the 1 over x, Remember that its antiderivative, as we talked about last section, is ln of x. So anytime you see 1 over x, you can't use the power rule, you have to call it ln of x. So let's see a couple of examples. Um, you need to get used to this. It requires a lot of practice. Um, this first case, um, it looks like you might have to use the chain rule because I have uh, two things being divided. But remember, if you have an instance where you only have one term on the bottom, you could divide each term by that, um, by that denominator. So I could call this, or this means the exact same thing as the antiderivative of 3x minus 4 plus 5 over x. Yeah. Now, this one I don't know how to take the antiderivative, and I'll give you a hint. What we're going to use, we're going to use what we just learned. But I'm going to call this 5x to the negative 1, or I'll just call it 5 over x. Just know that it's in the same format as everything that we've been doing here. Okay. So the antiderivative of 3x minus 4, plus 5x to the negative 1. So now I'm going to apply the power rule of integration to everything. This one, if I raise it up 1, will be 2, and then I divide by 2. So this becomes 3 over 2x squared. This one right here just becomes minus 4x. And here, again, we have an instance. I can't just add 0 and divide, or add 1 and divide by it, because I'm going to end up dividing by 0. What I'm instead going to call this is ln of x, or ln of absolute value of x. So 5 ln absolute value of x, and then there's always that plus c. And there you go. This problem is a little bit different. You'll notice that in this problem, <coughs> I don't have a, <coughs> I don't have one term in the denominator. Instead, I have two terms, so I can't just do what I just did. What you're going to do, and for these all these types of problems, is I'm going to make this u. And what happens is that when I make this u, um, uh, we're going to end up using the rule that we just learned. So, very first thing in these types of problems, do you see how everything's technically multiplied by 4? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that 4. Oops. Should be a 2 dx. Alright. Now what you're going to do is I'll make this denominator u. It's the bigger um, degree also, so u equals 3x squared minus 2, which makes du 6x dx. In the problem, this whole x thing will be replaced by u, but you see how I'm left with an x dx? So I'm here on this problem, I'm going to get x dx by itself. Okay, so far? So now I'm going to do my substitution. I'm going to steal this space right here. Um, it'll be 4, um, integration sign, of 1 over u. Then this x dx now becomes 1 6 du. Okay, so far. I have a, just a, a number right here, so I'm going to factor that out. When I factor it out, this will now just become 2 thirds. Now it's something that I know how to take the antiderivative of. See this 1 over u? I can take the antiderivative and it just becomes ln of u, or ln the absolute value of u. And then I think y'all remember the last step for u substitution. I can't solve my problem or end my problem with this u, so I'll plug the u back in. The answer is going to be 2 thirds ln absolute value 3x squared minus 2 plus c. Hope that's okay for you guys. Um, again, let's do some practice. I'll just move this over to the side for now. Move this over to the side for now. Same type of problem, but now I got some trig functions. And remember, in this case, um, you might want to try 
um, based on what we've learned before, you might want to say, let's make u equal 2x. Okay. So let's just say u equals 2x. But the problem is if I do that, just give you a heads up, and you don't need to write this down. Like, how does that make it easier for me to integrate? Right? I, just because I turned it into u, still doesn't help me out and solve this problem. So let me move this to the side. What I'm instead going to do is, first of all, I notice this 4. Remember how I pulled out the 4 because it's multiplied by 4? I'm going to pull out this 4 also. But just like in the second example, I'm going to make this whole thing down here u. Well, first let me rewrite the problem with the 4 out in front. So again, if you're, if you're curious why I did that, again, it's because if I've made these u, it didn't, it didn't make the problem any simpler for me. So now I'm going to make u cosine 2x plus 3. Sorry, it's messy. And I'll make du, when I take the derivative, by chain rule, this derivative of cosine 2x, derivative of the outside is going to be negative sine 2x, times the derivative of the inside will be 2. So the derivative of cosine 2x is negative sine 2x dx. Alright. In my problem, see how I'm left with a sine 2x dx? So in this problem, we get sine 2x dx by itself. I get negative half du equals sine 2x dx. Now I'm ready for my... I'm just going to move this real quick. Now I'm ready for my substitution. This is the problem that I, uh, I rewrote it as when I pulled the 4 out. So it's going to be um, integration sign 1 over u, because we said u is cosine 2x plus 3. <coughs> the 4 is out in front, and then the sine 2x dx will turn into just a negative half du. And now you'll notice, man, isn't that much easier to integrate now? Can't, isn't that easier to take an antiderivative of? Yeah, it is. <coughs> so I'll take out this negative half, which gives me a negative 2 out in front. Now I'm just left with the antiderivative of 1 over u, which again is just ln, absolute value of u. And now that I'm done, all I'm going to do is plug the initial condition, or the initial substitution back in. So the answer is going to be negative 2 ln absolute value cosine 2x plus 3 plus e. Yeah? Alright. Um, let's just do one more example, and I think, <coughs> I think you guys will understand it. Um, First of all, this is a definite symbol, um, definite integral, and I think you guys are comfortable with that. <coughs> comfortable with that. I'm just going to do one more example with ease, as we learned that yes, um, last time. So just like the um, previous time, I could make 3x equal to u, but if I made these into u, it doesn't make my problem any easier. I'm going to take out this 2. And again, sorry if this is messy. Okay. And I'm going to make u the denominator, because it will make my problem a little bit easier. The derivative of e3x is, as we learned yesterday, e to the 3x, and then a dx. In my problem, you see how I have an e3x dx? I need to substitute that. So here I'm going to just get e3x dx by itself. So 1 third du equals e to the 3x dx. I will do the substitution now. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, the 2 is out in front, antiderivative, 1 over u, right? And then this e to 3x dx now just becomes 1 third du. Now it should look a little bit easier for you. I'll pull out the 1 third. Now it's in the form that I know how to take the antiderivative of, which is as we learn is ln. And now that I've taken the antiderivative, I'll plug in the original substitution, or the thing that we originally substitute out. The answer is 2 thirds ln of e to 3x minus 4 plus c. Alright, um, just two more examples. Um, I don't want you to forget or know how to, um, blah. I don't want you to forget how to knew these two uh, processes I've touched before. Remember average value, right? And then I hope you remember how to do this antiderivative of a derivative. Okay, so just to do this really quick, it says here's a function, here's an interval, integrate it for it. Uh, give me the average value. So remember, there's an, a fraction out in front. See that's one to e squared. 
How long is this interval? Well, this interval is going to be e squared minus 1. Okay. The antiderivative of 1 to e squared, and it's going to be of this of this uh, function. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Okay. If I make u equal to x, e just turns into u's, but it doesn't make my problem any easier. And I don't know the antiderivative of, of ln of x. A little bit tricky, right? I can't just make this u, and I also can't just um, just divide both of my x. It also won't make my problem any easier. This is one of those tricky um, conceptual critical thinking questions. What if I made u ln of x? Would you agree du would be 1 over x dx? Yeah? Well, in this problem, I could pull out this 4. The ln of x turns into u, and then I have this 1 over x dx that'll all just turn into du. Okay, let me show you how that looks like. I'll pull out the 4 first. Okay. And then remember, I have to change the bounds. ln of 1, as I told you, or you can check on your calculator, is 0. ln of e squared, um, you can put that in your calculator also, but I'll just leave it like that for now. And I'll give you a heads up, the answer is uh, 2. And this ln of x right here just turns into u. And this 1 over x dx will just turn into du. And now that's something a whole lot easier, a whole heck of a lot easier than what the original problem looked like. So what I'll do is 4 over e squared minus 1. Again, you can put this in your calculator, but ln of e squared is 2. u du. Antiderivative of u, if you remember, is uh, half u squared. Um, I'll plug in a 2, I'll plug in a 0. You'll notice also if I plug in a 0, I'll just get 0. And if I plug in a 2, 2 squared is 4. Half of 4 is 2. So this whole thing just becomes 8 over e squared minus 1. That's how you do average value. And the last one for today's lesson is review. Uh, remember how to do these types of problems. We just did it in the last chapter. Uh, what I'll do is I want the antiderivative from, you know, and you got to think about which one's bigger. Is the cube root of e bigger or e? Um, e is bigger, so I'm going to put that on top. Of the function, 5 over x is equal to f of e minus f of cube root of e. So remember that formula from the last, the last chapter? Now, this right here, I can pull out the 5. And over here, remember I'm going to substitute. I'm looking for f of e, so that becomes x. And then f of the cube root of e, this should be e, it says it was given to me as 4. Okay. Now this one, I know the... Uh, I know what the antiderivative of this is. It's ln of x. Okay, so far. Again, I want you to feel comfortable putting this into your calculator. Um, hopefully you guys are comfortable with it. If not, uh, you could, I don't know, study, practice, but you need to know how to do this in a calculator. You also put this antiderivative in your calculator also. Um, but it's going to be 5 ln e minus ln cube root of e. Again, I know this already, so um, ln of e is 1. And then ln of the cube root of e is 1 third. So this is just 2 thirds, or I get 10 thirds. And I'm running out of space here, so maybe I could move this again. So this becomes 10 thirds equals x minus 4. And then when I add 4 to both sides, this is the same thing as 12 over 3, the answer is going to be 22 over 3. So all we learned in this section and practice a whole bunch of stuff you should already know is that the antiderivative of 1 over x is ln of x. So anyway, hope you enjoyed and understood, and we'll practice this tomorrow. Take care.